So today we will derive an uh, equation of change for vorticity, but before we get to do that, let's just quickly recap. Uh, let me just find... Um, right. Oh, okay. Uh, all these. Let me find some new all right. some paper. All right, so or digital paper. So vorticity we denoted as curl of velocity field V. And I will sometimes, so this in itself is a vector, so I will occasionally put in brackets around it just to remind you that it's a vector. This is a notation that book supports, but I, here and there, depends how lengthy the equation is, I might drop these <laughs> brackets um, from the equation. So what is vorticity? What does it measure? Tendency to rotate. So if I actually have some vorticity to the flow, then basically the direction of the vorticity will be my axis, direction of the axis of rotation. Okay, and I will have some non-zero vorticity. So I can and it's also measured traveling with the flow. Alright, so and we had the standard, uh, there was that small example if you just had a rigid rotation, right? Entire body of fluid rotating as if it was a rigid solid, then you would actually get so omega was an angular velocity of this rotation. Okay? Then you would get the vorticity of that two-dimensional flow if you put it in a uh, in a two dimensions, the velocity vector in two dimensions, and there is no translation in Z or anything happening in Z then your vorticity would be 2 omega times the identity vector in z direction. So basically you would be uh, collinear with the axis of this rotation and the vorticity would be in absolute sense uh, equal to this 2 times angular velocity. Alright, so this is vorticity measures tendency of local flow to rotate. Okay. Now the reason why we actually kind of have to deal uh, in the way I compute vorticity it would be equal to I would take a determinant formal determinant and these are my identity vectors in x, y and z and then I would have operators, partial derivative operators on Vx, Vy, Vz. Okay. And there was one key insight is if I actually had instead of my, uh, so if I had, I'm going to change color too, so if I had a field that was in itself a gradient of a scalar field, okay, then this vorticity would be equal to, so here I would actually have partial p, partial x, partial p, partial y, partial p, partial z. For instance, if I actually look at the delta x, so this would be delta x times partial partial y of partial par partial p partial z minus partial partial z of partial p partial y since I can typically for continuous and smooth fields I can interchange the order of the partial derivatives this would be equal to zero and I would actually do that for every of every direction so I would actually get a zero 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 okay And that's because, for instance, partial y, partial z, 
is equal to partial z, partial y, etc. So all of them, all of the possible combinations. And this is the key insight that Stokes had in mind when he actually started deriving this uh, equation of vorticity. So basically, if you look at the Navier-Stokes equation, it actually has a gradient of P inside. Okay? And if I took the curl of that equation, that gradient would disappear. And therefore, my entire coupling with pressure in that equation would disappear. It would give me a higher order equation in which now I would have both velocity and vorticity in there, and vorticity being a first order equation and velocity. But I would lose the tendency of pressure, and that will actually help us to devise a way to solve the uh, flow around the sphere in a sort of like a symmetric way, so in two dimensions. Okay. So basically, Stokes had this insight, so we will use this property to get, whoops, to, or to eliminate pressure from Navier-Stokes equation So basically, we will get so the procedure is basically take curl of Navier Stokes equation eliminate pressure as well as some other, or gradient of pressure, as well as some other gradients. So this will in, involve a little bit of juggling some uh, vector identities using known vector identities. Obtain equation of change in vorticity and then after that we will in introduce streamlines and solve this equation for 2D flows. So this portion is the most technical part of this course, really. Okay. So take it as such. It's not necessarily easy to digest. But at the same time, have in mind that this will ultimately give us so-called Stokes formula for the drag on a spherical particle in flow, which has myriad of applications. So engineering applications galore, it's something that is used and used and abused, if you will, <laughs> like any other good and simple formula in uh, environmental and overall petroleum and environmental subsurface uh, engineering applications. Okay? So again, stick with me. This is technical, but we will get to it. It's important for you as graduate students to see the basically how do you build up to solving uh, such an important engineering problem. So ultimately, I'm going to put this will lead to Stokes formula for a drag on the spherical 
particle in a laminar fluid flow, Newtonian constant density and all that, which has a lot of applications in subsurface engineering. So basically the pain is worth it. Okay. Let's get going. May I? Am I allowed to move on the page? Not yet? So what is my Navier-Stokes equation? Navier-Stokes equation has rho and then material derivative of V, which I'm going to write in all of its details. So it's dV dt plus V dot gradient V is equal to minus gradient pressure plus viscosity times Laplacian of V plus rho G. So this is Navier-Stokes equation. Now let's actually first identify all of the possible gradients here that I might have in this equation. One is obvious, so basically this part and this part, I'm going to call that minus gradient of generalized pressure. So this is the part that I expect to disappear when I take the curl of this equation. But then I'm also use, I'm going to use two uh, technical uh, formulas from the appendix that will actually help me break down this term and this term as well. Okay. So one is so-called A423 that states that this V dot gradient of V from my material derivative is one half of gradient of scalar product of V with itself. minus, and watch this part, V curl vorticity. Okay, so this part is just a reminder, this is vorticity. So we will have these curls with the vorticity Multiple orders, you get a little dizzy, just a warning. <laughs> okay. So basically I have gradient of something, right? And that something will disappear in the process. So, so I'm counting on that. Second part is this other uh, part where I have Laplacian of uh, V. So A422, this is from appendix, gives the following. Laplacian of V, and this is again a vector. So how do I define a Laplacian of V? Just to recap. Laplacian of every component. So each component of this vector is Laplacian of the components of V. Okay. So first component would be Laplacian of Vx, second one Laplacian of Vy, and third one Laplacian of Vz. Well, you can actually prove 
by some writing it down that this is same as divergence of a gradient and therefore I can break it down as a gradient of divergence minus curl of curl itself, so double curl if you will, curl of vorticity. How do you prove these identities? You plug in what the left hand side is, you plug in what the right hand side is and try to prove that they're equal. We have definitions, how do we do divergence, how do we do Laplace, and how do we do uh, gradient. So it's a bit of algebra and manipulation, uh, and it's a little technical, but you can also just take these for granted. Some of these you got as homework just to get some practice. I'm not necessarily going to ask you on the exam to know how to prove these, but I want you to know how it's done. Okay, so it's not something that I will test you on, other than uh, working it through in the homework. But you should be aware that these formulas exist and you can use them in proofs like this. Okay, so let's now plug these parts in. So again, this is the this one and this one I will plug in some kind of underlying correspondent. Again, these are vector identities, so I could actually put curl brackets around it. Uh, just to remind ourselves that it's a vector. I t typically tend to use brackets in these terms where I have multiple curls just to simply make it easily readable. Okay? All right, so let's now continue or plug this in. So then I have t plus one half gradient of v dot v minus v curl curl of v and then it's equal to minus gradient of p plus mu oops gradient of divergence minus mu curl of so what are the terms so now I'm gonna take of the entire equation And in that process, this term will disappear, this term will disappear, this term will disappear. So what we will have left, and I'm also going to uh, divide by a row. So when I do that, What's left is divergence of dv dt <coughs> minus, this is where I'm going to start using extra, did I mention you will get dizzy from all of the curl? Okay. Oh. There are three of, three of them here in a row, huh? And technically I could put another brackets around the whole thing, right? Because it's a vector. I'm kind of using as many brackets as I need just to delineate terms, but not too many brackets, I guess. And I'm going to put actually all of the terms on the same side, so it's going to become plus mu over rho. Did I mention we're going to get dizzy?
So notice that we have curl here of vorticity and he here we have V curl vorticity. So there is a difference. Doesn't look very different, but there is a difference in these two terms. All right, now let's actually recognize the vertices. So this is the same thing I can interchange. So this is DDT of curl. So I'm going to now replace vorticity with W. So I have it here and I have it here. So I arrive at dw dt. Whoops. V curl curl of V curl vorticity plus what is rho over uh, mu over rho? Another type of viscosity, which kind? Dynamic. So that is nu. Okay. So dynamic viscosity. Okay, this is very cryptic, but it looks relatively simple. We will do one more application and we will basically apply the A422 again. So basically A422 has this term. So I can apply A422 to W instead of V. What is the benefit of that? The benefit of that is that there would be, so this is according to that equation, This, this term minus this term. Now I have a divergence of W. Divergence of a curl is a zero just like curl or gradient is a zero. <coughs> Divergence, you can prove it in the same way. I'm not going to prove it here, but you can prove it to yourself. So whenever I have a divergence over curl, this is equal to zero because divergence of a curl is zero for any vector so then this last term simply simplifies to Laplacian of vorticity. I don't know whether you want to call Laplacian of vorticity something simple, but it's simpler than what's written here. Okay. Everything is relative. <laughs> Everything is relative. So can I move on? Did everybody have a chance? Mm -hmm. hmm? Divergence of curl is zero. 
curl of divergence, no, it doesn't necessarily commute. You can give it a try, but a uh, curl of divergence I can't necessarily compute. Divergence is scalar, so I can't do curl of a divergence. So for a vector field, divergence is scalar. Maybe I could compute divergence, a uh, curl of divergence of uh, tensor. Curl operates on vectors, but divergence is scalar. So divergence of a vector is scalar. Therefore, I can't do curl of divergence of a vector. I could do curl of divergence of a tensor. So we know this how it looks like, right? So you would have partial v z partial y minus partial v x partial v z in the first coordinate, then three terms like that, and then you would do divergence of that. So you would do partial partial x of that first term plus partial partial of y uh, of the second term partial, and in that you would probably have to use again that you can take partial derivatives in any order. And once you do that, you would get that this is a zero. So things would simply cancel. OK. So once I actually have that, see. I will arrive at the equation of change for vorticity. D W D T minus curl of V curl W minus dynamic viscosity Laplacian of W. So this, just like Navier-Stokes equation, is for incompressible Newton uh, Newtonian fluid. Now, how will this make our life simpler? In one sentence, and I'm going to now derive that. Basically, we will look at two-dimensional flows, which I can use stream function expression for. Stream function will be one V function, such that I can express velocity field as partial derivatives of it. Okay. So since it's a scalar function, I will actually end up searching for Laplacian of Laplacian of that stream function. And this entire equation will be this, it will come down to double Laplacian of the stream function equals to zero, okay, for steady state to be false. And in those cases, I will actually be able to use that to solve the problem, okay. So, let me define stream functions first, okay? So this is where we are going for, for 2D incompressible flows. This equation for steady state will be Laplacian of Laplacian of Psi equals to zero, where this is a scalar function. 
So this vector equation will come down to a scalar equation, okay? And that's going to be something that we can solve. It doesn't look super simple, but we will be actually able to solve it. So let's actually introduce what is this psi and what, what is this stream function. Okay. So we need the comp. So we need the concept of streamline and stream function. So if I have streamline, introduce streamlines. So streamline is a line, so if I introduce a particle in flow and let it go through, so it basically has a path, and that path I call x of t, y of t, it's a parameterized path in time, then velocity is tangent to that path. So essentially, I have a streamline, something like this, okay, so this is x of t, y of t. So flow path, whoops, for a particle in flow. velocity v, which is dx dt, d, dy dt, is tangent to the streamline. Now, Normally, these streamlines change and they can change in time. If I have a steady state flow, however, then I expect that every time I introduce a particle at this location, okay, it's going to follow this line. Okay? So at some other time, I introduce more particles at this location, they will actually follow the same streamline. So I expect that for steady state flow, though it's not true for all of the flows. And that actually helps you visualize the flows. You can introduce dye in the flow. And if you establish the steady state solution, those dyes will actually trace these streamlines in your flow without really changing or mixing. Okay? So essentially, uh, for steady state flow, you expect these streamlines to be the same as long as you start from the same uh, location. Now, stream function, and that is going to be this C, is constant. So, stream function is a function is constant along a streamline. Why? Well, I can, so this is, I'm defining that as a function that is constant uh, along streamlines, so let me see what it should be. So basically I'm going to say, okay, this is a function such that C along that path is constant for any time t. So I'm going to try to figure out what the stream function, what could be a possible definition based on this requirement. Okay. So this, if I to take a total derivative, means that deep C dt is equal to zero. 
Well, by definition of total derivative, this is what? Gradient of C dot uh, dx dt dy dt. So that's basically partial C partial x dx dt plus partial C partial y dy dt. which is partial C partial x times vx plus partial P C partial y vy. So this is a dot product, right, of two vectors. So that means that partial C partial x and partial C, if I take gradient of C as a vector, it's orthogonal to vx vy. So Vx, Vy is a tangent here. This is my Vx, Vy. So I'm looking for a vector that is orthogonal, and of course I could go either this way or the other way. I would still be, I have plus minus 180 degrees here to define Ortho orthogonal the vector, but one definition could be okay, that this is minus Vy and this is Vv, Vx. And actually from two-dimensional stuff, I always know that if I have Vx, Vy, then minus Vy Vx gives me a vector that is orthogonal to it that's rotated by 90 degrees into the Cartesian coordinate system. So basically this inspires the definition for stream function <coughs> partial C partial X is minus Vy partial C partial Y is Vx. And this is C, Greek letter C. So if I had a velocity field, steady state or otherwise, I can put these two equations and define stream function using this known velocity field, so I can basically integrate it. Okay. So this is a definition of stream functions. And of course, you have a choice of, of course, making this Vy and minus Vx. It's, it's a matter of choice. So how will this actually help us? Okay. Let me see where am I going to get. Let's actually see two-dimensional flow and how then this equation of change of vorticity will look like in it. So let's say I have two-dimensional flow. Then I have V, Vx, Vy, zero. We already derived, I think, last time that vorticity for this flow, so if I'm moving in two dimensions, say here on this floor, vorticity has to show, has to point in z direction, correct? And x and y components are zero. So 
So we showed this is 0, 0, partial vy, partial x, minus partial vx, partial y. And this is simply by applying definition of vorticity to this vx, vy, 0 vector. Now, since I know that vy is what now, based on stream function, what is vy? Minus partial c partial x, right? x squared, right? Minus partial c partial y squared. So this is essentially 0, 0 minus Laplacian of Psi. Okay. Or I could look at it as Laplacian of Psi delta Z. So if I had in my vorticity equation, so this was my w, right? In my vorticity equation, I had Laplacian of w, right? Now Laplacian of w is then negative Laplacian of Laplacian of delta Z, uh, oops, C delta Z. So that's Laplacian of 0, 0 Laplacian of C. And how did I say that I take Laplacian of a vector? Component by component, right? So first two will be zero. Okay. Now, I will not go into proof, but basically the term from the vorticity equation without going into detail this term can be assumed approximately zero for creeping flow in 2D So then my steady state, so I had, this was my vorticity equation. So for steady state, This term is zero. This is approximately zero for creeping flow. And all I have left is this, right? And this, I know what it is. So basically, it comes down to 
being 0. And note that this vector equation became a scalar, scalar equation because x and y coordinates, there is nothing to them for 2D flows. Okay? We will formally write this operator, this Laplacian squared, as gradient to the 4, if you will, so formally. Define a new operator. So again, C is stream function for 2D flow. And I have creeping flow for incompressible Newtonian fluid. Of incompressible Newtonian fluid. So this is the equation that we will solve for flow around the sphere. And next time we'll get to it and get obtained the velocity, uh, velocity uh, field. And once I have the velocity field, I can plug it into the Navier Stokes to get the pressure field that I feel like. So this does not in itself solve for pressure, it solves only for velocity field. But once I have velocity field, I can plug it into Navier Stokes to get the pressure field. Okay? All right.